Hey guys, it's Mike here, and welcome to another edition of Dragon Ball Super Predictions, in which I'm going to be giving my predictions for Dragon Ball Super Episode 57, and talking about what I think is going to happen within it, using the next episode preview, the ending of Episode 56, and information that we've learned leading up to this point in the arc. And I also have some interesting theories which I'd like to propose about the identity of Black, the way he and Zamasu might have met, and some other stuff that may possibly happen going forward forward in Dragon Ball Super. So without further ado, let's get into these predictions. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all upcoming videos in the future. So as we saw at the end of Dragon Ball Super Episode 56, after going to the future, Goku, Vegeta, and Future Trunks finally confronted Black, and it was time for them to fight him in their final climactic bout. Vegeta went first, but was ultimately defeated by Black once he used his Super Saiyan Rose transformation and stabbed him through the chest with an energy sword. Furthermore, Goku fought him next, was overpowered, and seemed to be utterly defeated, right about to be killed by Black's Kamehameha, when suddenly a voice from the sky came down, and thus landing next to Black was Zamasu, saying that he was the one who was going to kill Goku and not Black. And naturally, that cliffhanger leads into the next episode of Dragon Ball Super, in which it seems like it's all going to be the climactic battle between Goku and Black and future Trunks and Zamasu. Now, episode 56 seems to have left us with a little bit more questions than it has answers in terms of what's going on with Dragon Ball Super right now. Questions such as, what is the true identity of Black? What was Zamasu's snapping point to send him down a path of becoming pure evil and actually aiding in some of these evil deeds being done? And how did Zamasu and Black first meet? Now, as we've seen the subsequent episodes of this arc, it all seems to have been building up to Zamasu finally turning evil. So much focus was placed on him, the T that shows the impurities within him, how he acted on the barbarian planet by killing one of the members of that race, and how he and Gawasu seem to be fundamentally different in the way they observe things. So it seems like everything up until this point in the arc has been building for Zamasu to turn evil, and it seemed like there was a a lot of overtures between Zamasu and Black to make it seem as if that Black was really Zamasu the entire time. For example, there were the rose buds that were falling around Zamasu, and we knew that the Super Saiyan Rose A transformation was going to debut in the last episode, so of course we all made that jump, and Toei has seemingly led us in that direction as well as perhaps Toriyama to make us believe that these two characters are one and the same, and then suddenly reveal that they're two completely completely different people, so far as we can tell. But nonetheless, it appears that Zamasu did in fact turn evil, and something must have caused for this to go down. And it all seems to be going back to Goku, and when Goku first met with Zamas, now Zamas before that should have already been kind of going down that path. He was into the idea of justice and trying to intervene, whereas Gawasu continued to tell him that is not the role of the Kaioshin, but only the god of destruction and he continuously wanted to rid the universe of the Ningen or mortals so that he could get rid of the mistake of the gods or so that he could get rid of the evil ones who are the Ningen that have knowledge that the gods have given them, which he believes is a mistake. So Goku meeting him in the first place and fighting him and kind of beating him probably further cemented his prejudices so that he could go about that path to becoming evil and wiping out humanity. Even though he doesn't see it as evil, he's still evil from the perspective of all of the protagonists in this arc. But one thing that I do have to point out is that everything happening right now in the series is taking place in an alternate timeline, in the history of Trunks timeline, so to speak. And as a result, of that, we have to question, is this the same Zamas that is from the Universe 10 that Goku, Beerus, and Whis went to to fight him? And if so, how is he there in the timeline right now? Because if we look at what's on Black's finger, it is a time ring. Now, as we heard Gowasu say in a previous episode, going back to the past is not only an impossibility, but is strictly forbidden. And as we saw, when Black went to the past of the main timeline, he was sucked into that time-space anomaly, which sent him back to the future Trunks timeline. 
However, what Gawasu said was that you're able to go to the future, so it is entirely possible that the Zamas that we're seeing right now did take his own time ring to the future, but then of course that begs the question again of how did Black get his own time ring, and as we saw when we looked in the box that Gawas and Zamas had, he did not have the time ring missing from that box and all of them were to be accounted for. So that leaves me to wonder about two different possibilities here. Either number one, Black is actually Gawasu, not Zamasu, and not some other version of Goku, and somehow Gawasu was turned evil through the influence of Zamasu, the coming of Goku, or something else that waits for them to be seen. Either that or I see Zamasu having killed Gawasu and taken the earrings for himself and for Black as well as whatever time rings they now have in their possession. Now the reason I bring up the earrings again is because both Black and Zamasu have an earring on their left ear, not on the left and right ear which would indicate some sort of fusion, but both of them have that earring on their ear which indicates that they are a Kaioshin according to what Gawasu said when he gave Zamasu one when they went to the Barbarian Planet. Now this again hints at the possibility that Black is Gawas because the fact that they're once again sharing the earrings and they did not fuse. Furthermore, we also see the fact that Black has the main time ring as opposed to Zamas. But it's also entirely possible that Zamas killed Gawas in the main timeline and then took the ring and the earrings for himself. But this is where it gets kind of tricky because then we have to figure out who exactly Black is if he's not Gawas. It's entirely possible that Black is in fact Zamas, but from another timeline, from the history of Trunks' timeline. As Black, when he was sucked back into that portal, was sent to the History of Trunks timeline, and he originally was introduced in the History of Trunks timeline, so it's entirely possible for us to say that he's originally from there as well, and he is not only referring to himself constantly as a god, but saying he has the energy of the gods, and on top of that, has the exact same ideals as Zamas. So perhaps Zamas went to that timeline where Goku no longer existed because he was dead and never met Goku, talked to himself from that alternate timeline, and convinced him to join his crusade to wipe out the Ningen across the entire multiverse, as well as to get revenge upon the main timeline's Goku. Although when Vegeta first transformed into a Super Saiyan Blue in front of Black, Black was not surprised at all. So again, how did he in fact see or know of this Super Saiyan Blue and Godly transformation in the first place, when the only form that fought both Zamas and Black was the Super Saiyan 2 transformation of Goku and Future Trunks? But again, Black and Zamas would have access to Time Rings, so it's entirely possible that they went back in time, saw the fights of Goku and Vegeta against Frieza, against Beerus, their training, and tried to figure out the the best way in order to defeat them. After all, Black also knows the Kamehameha, and how would he have known about that technique which neither Goku nor Trunks used on him unless they went back in time and saw it? But again, there lies the issue of the fact that when you travel through time with the time rings, if you go back in time, eventually you are brought back to the future where you came from. So there is a theory that people are proposing that Black went back in time and took a younger or a weaker version of Goku, brainwashed him, and gave him these powers so that he could fight Goku as an ultimate form of revenge. But if Zamas can only really go to the future to actually enact any kind of plans, what if he did go to the future and get a form of Goku? What if perhaps he went to the future, a hundred years plus in the future, and got a young form of Goku who's not truly Goku, but we already know is powerful? And what if this bridges the gap between Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT in a big way? What if perhaps Zamas went to the future to the end of Dragon Ball GT, to the final episode, and he saw Goku's descendant fighting in the Tenkaichi Budokai? What if Zamas kidnapped Goku Jr., brainwashed him, 
made him believe that he's no longer a Saiyan and that he is a god, and then trained him to defeat Goku and to destroy all those in his wake. And what if GT is just another timeline, and Goku and Vegeta and Trunks have to go to that timeline to recruit the help of the Super Saiyan 4s to defeat this ultimate foe in Dragon Ball Super? Leading into the ultimate clash between Super and GT in the Omniversal Tournament after this arc is done. But I really doubt that's going to happen, so what might end up happening is that the reason why this black character is referring to himself as a god, the reason he has the ability to shapeshift, and the reason he has these godly powers and can even take out characters like Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, Super Saiyan Blue Goku, and gets all these massive power-ups is because he is in fact a god after all, and perhaps he is the god of destruction from Universe 10. Maybe the whole reason why they introduced the idea that the Kaioshin and the God Destruction are a set is because he literally is one of the Gods of Destruction, and he's helping Zamas because he believes that humans or Negan being up there and interfering with the Gods and even trying to compete with the Gods is kind of an insult to him and his power and his honor, and maybe he's completely different from Beerus in that he wants to just completely wipe everything out as that is his complete role. I mean, after all, if Beerus is kinda evil, maybe there's extremely evil gods of destruction out there who basically have their entire goal to go about wiping everything out of existence, and it would make sense for him to take on a completely different guise because of the fact that if Zeno finds out that he's the god of destruction and doing all this stuff, well, he's probably gonna be blinked away in an instant. But another final piece of evidence to possibly add to this is what is happening in the next episode preview and what we hear from Goku talking about Zamas, and that is that no attacks seem to be working on him or affecting him in which Trunks is attacking him. Now, this could mean, perhaps, that Zamas has also gotten a significant power-up and he's far beyond the power of Trunks right now when Trunks is attacking him. And of course, Trunks is a Super Saiyan 2 who is only roughly around the level of Goku Super Super Saiyan 2, so it's entirely possible that he might need to power up to defeat him. But then there's the possibility that what the name of the episode is implying is something more than anyone assumed. As the title of the next episode is called, Advent of the Immortal God Zamas. So what if that name is meant to be taken literally? What if perhaps Zamas pursued the same goal that Frieza did because he knew that he was not powerful enough on his own to be able to fight somebody like Goku or Trunks? What if perhaps he attained immortality through the use of the Dragon Balls? After all, if Black knew that Goku and Vegeta could transform into Super Saiyan Blues, wouldn't it make sense that Zamas might have learned some other things, perhaps about the Dragon Balls? And if he had, what is to stop him from using that time ring to go to a point in time where he could easily access the Dragon Balls, gather all of them, and wish for immortality? So going into the next episode, Dragon Ball Super, there's a bunch of different ideas and a bunch of different possibilities that are now questioning and rolling around within our minds that make us wonder what exactly is going to happen. So I think that if Zamas truly is immortal now, if he's truly invulnerable because of the Dragon Balls, then we're going to have a really big problem on our hands, unless of course the power of someone like Zeno is enough to completely override the Dragon Balls, to completely override the the immortality and just wipe him out altogether, with perhaps Goku being forced once and for all to press that button, bring him to the History of Trunks timeline, and wipe him out completely. Either that, or perhaps it ends with Zeno showing up saying, wait, 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 I still have that tournament coming, you guys can settle it there, and all of this was build up to make the next tournament, to make the next arc really relevant, and to give us some personal stakes and some real stakes going into it, where it seemed like there were completely none at all. Maybe whoever wins gets a kind of twisted metal ending where they get to pick whatever they want, 
and there's horrible consequences like a monkey's paw or something like that. Maybe perhaps Black and Zamasu will wish for every single Ningen to be completely eliminated, and Zeno will say, okay, I got nothing better to do. What do you want, Goku? And Goku maybe once and for all will wish to bring King Kai back to life because for some reason he's still the Kai, and he is probably pissed right now that he's still not brought back to life, even though Goku has had so many opportunities. But it's Goku, so he'll probably just wish for something to eat. In either case, in the next episode of Dragon Ball Super, I predict we're going to get a pretty awesome fight using both Trunks and Goku. I don't know if Vegeta's dead yet. I don't know if he's going to die. If he does die in the future, what really happens there? I guess there's still the Namekian Dragon Balls. Hopefully, Goku will, you know, after defeating Black and Zamas, assuming they do, will say, hey, Trunks, how about we go to New Namek and wish back all the people that we could have easily wished back decades ago? But I was too busy off training in heaven with King Kai for seven years, abandoning my wife, my son, and my other son I didn't even know about. So maybe this time I'll try and make it up to you and, you know, help you out a little bit. Say, do you want to learn how to do the Kaioken, the instant transmission, the spirit bomb, or the Super Saiyan Blue? What's that? I gotta go off and train again. See you never. Bye, cha! Oh, Goku, how you make this series so frustrating by not teaching anyone anything, even though it would significantly help everyone in the end. But as we know, it's Dragon Ball, and the villains always lose in the end, or just become good guys, so I'm just gonna take the safe prediction and say that's what's gonna happen. In either case, this has been another edition of Dragon Ball Super Predictions. Let me know your own thoughts down below. What are your predictions for what's gonna happen? And what did you think about some of those theories I put forward in this video? Do you like them? Do you dislike them? Let me know down below. And don't forget to like, comment, share this video with your friends so we can make more videos like this in the future, and subscribe. And as I always say, stick around, because there's a lot more to come in the future. What? What do you want? Why are you still watching the fucking video? Do you expect me to say something? Well, I know what you expect me to say, but I'm not going to say it. Rubber baby buggy bumpers.